Hello YouTubers, Sweet Costa Rica here. As an amateur collector and user of cookeries, I have always wanted a real cookery. You know, using a good cookery is a fantastic experience. The good news is that any cookery coming out of Nepal is technically a real cookery. The bad news is not all cookeries made in Nepal are the same quality or have the same purpose. There are basically three types of kukuris coming out of Nepal. Antiques, replicas, and tourist kukuris. Truth in advertising has never been a strong point with many of these online kukuri companies. So take their marketing with a healthy dose of suspicion. These kukuris are heavy, unbalanced, and have thick spines. They are low priced, but you do get what you pay for. They also have poor heat treating, and making your kukuri's edge soft. So that means you'll be frequently sharpening it. Easily the worst kukuri manufacturers, they are not recommended. Sharpened crowbars could be a term applied to these heavyweights from Cookery House. Unlike traditional cookeries that weigh about 16 to 24 ounces, Cookery House products weigh about 28 to 35 ounces or more, and their sharp corners and bar stock thickness and really unusual designs are not very conducive to regular use. Yeah. Well-known cookery manufacturer Himalayan Imports makes some high-quality cookeries and now we start to see some well-made and heavy-duty knives. Known for their high-polished blades and big cookeries, Himalayan Imports' main weakness is that most of their cookeries are too heavy for any type of traditional or multi-purpose use. An interesting note. On HI's bio page, I saw the Royal Kami, a Kami that made uh, kukuris for the king. Now that is a very controversial claim to say the least. A Royal Kami is a romantic idea, but probably just good Nepali marketing. Tora Blades tops my list as the best kukuri manufacturer because of their dedication to making large kukuris and small to the exact measurements and weights of the originals. If a Gurkha went to war, I think he would choose a Tora. If a farmer needed a multi-purpose kukuri, he would choose a Tora. If you want 
the closest thing to what they use in Nepal and in war, you should get a Torah. The easiest way to tell the difference between a tourist kukuri and a traditional one is to think about it this way. A tourist kukuri is like an axe or hatchet. They have thick spines, they're heavy, they're unbalanced. Most have full tangs and odd designs. Now this weighs 2.1 pounds, that's 950 grams. That's the same weight class as a tourist kukuri. A traditional kukuri is more like a machete. They have five to eight millimeter spines. They weigh just over a pound in a lot of cases. The tang is usually hidden or stick, and these kukuris are designed for multi-purpose use. This is a Tramontina machete. It weighs 17.5 ounces, that's 500 grams, the same weight as most traditional kukuris. Lastly, here are some great traditional kukuris. Outside their norm, and you can only get it on their form, is the KLV UK knife. That's the Himalayan Imports Kasha La Villager Utility Knife. This is about a 17 ounce knife, and it's, uh, it's wonderful to work with. This is a World War Battalion issue cookery from Tora. This is Tora's Indra 32 centimeter cookery. They both weigh the same, that's 18.75 ounces, 532 grams. These are classic examples of a villager and a uh, military issue kukuri. This is another favorite of mine. It's the Serpa kukuri. It's purely a villager and it's a sirapate. It has really nice craftsmanship. And it weighs about 18.25 ounces, that's 515 grams. Sweet Costa Rica signing off, hoping that you learned from my video a little bit about the differences between a traditional cookery and a tourist export cookery.